Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a horror mystery film from 2018, titled The Possession of Hannah Grace. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Inside an abandoned church, a girl is restrained on a bed. There are three men with her there, two are priests, one is her father. The older priest is performing an exorcism on the girl, Hannah. He comes closer to see if she's still breathing and she awakens, the demon controlling her body. The other priest sprays her with holy water, as the older one continues with the exorcism. The girl's convulses and her father comes closer begging her to fight. The demon pretends it's the girl for a moment, changing its eyes to her eye color, but laughs as it tricks the father. It takes control of the older priest as well and flings him across the room, killing him. Then, it starts suffocating the younger priest. Seeing what's happening, the father takes a pillow and kills the girl, which releases the other priest from the hold of the demon. The girl's fingers move. Three months later, Megan walks into a hospital for a job interview and is immediately joined by Lisa. They can be seen drinking coffee, as Lisa tells Megan that she will be there to help. Next, Megan is walking to the facility with Dr. Lewis, who's explaining her new job to her. He asks her about her issues at her previous job as a cop, but she says she's much better now, saying she can handle the job. They enter an elevator and the doctor says that after a while people get creeped out by the job, their imaginations running wild. She doesn't think that will happen to her. As they're going deeper inside the basement area, he tells her that the night shift can only get in and out of the facility by swiping their security card. He keeps showing her around the facility and takes her to the intake bay, telling her that while on duty she can never leave the premises. After the intake bay she is to take the bodies to the receiving room, where she is to take pictures of them as well as scan their fingerprints. They finally enter the facility's freezers and he welcomes her to the team. The next night, Megan walks into the dark hospital and talks to security in the reception area. One of the guards introduces himself as Dave and welcomes her to the night shift. Megan goes down to the resting home. Later, she's seen working on the computer, when the lights go out. She turns them back on, when a body arrives at the intake bay. Her and an ambulance worker transfer the body to the receiving area as they talk. Next, she's capturing images of the body, then scanning its fingerprints. She puts the body in the freezer, but Dave jumps out and scares her. He follows her around, apologizing. Later, Megan continues with her work, goes to the restroom and when she comes back, she has a vision of a man standing in the hallway. Upset, she goes to take some pills, but stops herself. Next, she's seen in AA meeting, sitting next to Lisa, telling the group about the man she saw previously. He was someone she was about to arrest when she was a police officer, but he shot her partner before she did anything. She shares that when she remembers the incident, she wants alcohol and pills. That day, someone wakes her up knocking on her door. It's her cop ex-boyfriend Andrew, who's there to get the rest of his things. She tells him about her new job, but he doesn't think it's the best idea to be spending that much time alone. Megan tells him that it was Lisa's idea, who's her sponsor and that the night shift worked great for her. The next night, she's at work and the alarm for the intake bay comes on. Megan goes to check but there's no one there at first. Suddenly a homeless guy jumps out at her asking her to let him in. She doesn't do it and calls security to inform them about the man, when an actual body is ready at the intake bay. The ambulance driver, Randy, asks her to come out and help him with the body, because he can't move it alone. She reluctantly steps out, knowing that's against regulations. As they're moving the body, the homeless man walks inside the facility and takes the elevator, but Megan doesn't see him. Randy is much chattier than the previous driver and starts telling her about the body, as they're transferring it. The body was found in an ally and the perpetrator escaped, with no clue of who he is. The body is Hannah. Randy keeps talking about it, saying whoever killed her, also tried to burn her body. Megan escorts him out. The lights on the other end of the hallway come on, as she walks inside to process the body. The first image she tries to capture fails. She tries again with no result. Megan moves the camera and tries to take another photo when she hurts herself. She decides to move on to the fingerprints. She takes them and starts scanning them in, when the computer fails too. Not sure of what to do, Megan places Hannah's body in the freezer, but as she's pushing it inside, one of the tables starts shaking and a few vials fall down, shattering. She goes to pick them up and cuts her hand. Returning to the push the body fully inside the freezer, a drop of her blood falls on it. Still in the freezer room, she dresses her wound and suddenly the freezer door opens. She checks and closes it. Next, she goes to her computer and uses Andrew's password to check on Hannah's case. She prints out her file and goes to check on the body again. The eye color in the file isn't the same one as the body. All of a sudden one fly appears on the body and then a whole swarm of them, frightening Megan. 
She takes another look, but the flies aren't there anymore. Megan puts Hannah back inside and returns to her computer. Suddenly, she hears a noise and she goes to investigate, only to find out that the body is gone. She takes a step outside and sees someone dragging the corpse away, so she follows. Suddenly, the homeless man attacks her, but she fights him off and when she goes to grab his knife, he's gone. Leaving the body in the hallway, she calls security and tells them to call the police. Megan runs back to the hallway, but the body isn't there. She walks into the burning room and finds the man getting ready to burn the body, so she tries reasoning with him. Suddenly security runs in and tackles him, but as they're taking him away, it's clear that it's Hannah's father. He tells Megan to destroy the body, saying that she's not dead. Later, he's arrested and Megan is putting away the body, when she hears something strange. She closes the freezer, regardless and walks away, but the doors open again. Megan is nervous to walk back, though she still takes the body out and opens the bag. Suddenly, her phone rings. It's Andrew checking up on her, but as she turns the body moves. Megan takes a closer look at it and it exhales. She wraps it up in a panic and leaves the room, when Lisa shows up at the door. She tells her that she can find someone to cover her shift, but Megan insists to stay. She tells Lisa that she heard the body exhale, but she tells her that bodies expunging air is a normal thing. Later, they're sitting in her office, talking about the attack and the night her partner got shot, when Dave walks in and tells her there's a cop that wants to talk to her. Lisa and Megan walk out and Dave stays in the facility. The door of the freezer opens again. The cop waiting for her is Andrew. He asks her how she is, but then starts asking her about a bottle of pills that have gone missing from his stuff. She gets angry with him, but before he leaves asks him to help her with something. Megan goes back down at the resting home and grabs Hannah's fingerprints. She gives them to Andrew, says that there's something odd about it and asks him to check it out. Dave plays around in the facility while he waits, but he hears something strange and walks into the freezer room. Something is moving inside the freezer, so he opens the door and looks inside, when a hand gabs and then pushes him out. It controls his body like it did the priest and drags him back into the freezer. Megan comes back in the facility and goes to the restroom. She sends an apology text to Andrew and suddenly hears someone come inside the restroom, thinking it's Dave. Her rubber band ball is rolled to her and she hunches over to see who it is, when a burned hand grabs it from the floor. Megan is terrified, but comes out of the stall. There's nothing there. Later, Andrew calls her back and tells her that Hannah has been dead for three months. Megan searches for Hannah online and finds an article about her, saying she was possessed by a demon. She goes to investigate the body again and notices that a huge wound that was on it previously isn't there anymore. The other security guard is looking for Dave too, when she walks to the reception desk. She asks for the security footage. Back at her office, she's going through the footage and finds a glitch that looks like the body is in the hallway. Frightened by that, she wants to take some pills again, but doesn't do it and instead goes to find Lisa and get her opinion about the footage. They're both in the facility, looking at the footage, but Lisa doesn't see the same thing Megan does. However, she does see the pills on a counter, while Megan is telling her about what the man was saying about the body in the burning room. Lisa confronts her about the drugs and doesn't quite believe her when she says she didn't take any. Her sponsor thinks that the visions she's been having are caused by stress. Lisa leaves the facility and goes to light a cigarette in a stairwell. She hears some noise upstairs and thinking it's Dave, runs up toward them. As she reaches a corner and sees Dave in the shadows, the body jumps out of the darkness and starts chasing after her. Lisa goes to the roof, but it follows her there and slowly kills her. Back inside the facility, there's another intake. It's Randy again, but this time Megan won't come out to help him. She tells him about what has happened and takes him inside to ask him about the wound on the body. He says that he saw it too, as well as her arm, that was burned when it arrived. Megan tells him that it looks like the body is healing herself. Megan is left alone again and calls Andrew to tell him that she kept his pills, because she was feeling anxious. She wanted to be honest with him. Before she hangs up, the body is seen crawling behind her, but she doesn't see it. It is in the elevator, fixing itself. Randy is driving out of the hospital parking, when he suddenly hits something. He goes out to check what it was, but his phone rings and as he answers, he hears a strange noise behind him. He investigates what it was and looks through the back of the ambulance. The body is crawling behind him. He turns around and it's there. He runs, but it pins him between two ambulances and is coming to get him too. It crawls up to him and kills him. Simultaneously, Megan is checking the footage from a few moments before and sees the same glitch in the elevator first, then the body crawling inside. She runs out thinking Randy's in danger, even though she's not supposed to, she goes into the parking lot and finds him dead. Andrew calls her, telling her that the man from the burning room escaped. Suddenly, 
he appears behind her and grabs her, taking her hostage. He tells her to get the body out of the freezer. When he opens the bag, the body has changed again. He says that she heals herself by killing people. The man asks why it hasn't killed her too. Megan says that she believes him, so he starts telling her about Hannah, that the demon inside of her doesn't want to leave and that the blue eye is its mark. He explains that he killed her during the last exorcism to save the lives of others, but when they went to bury the body it wasn't there anymore. It killed four people in the funeral home. They go to the burning room, as he tells Megan that the only way to destroy the demon is to burn the body. As she looks at the fire, the demon incapacitates Hannah's father and goes after her next, but the man attacks it and saves Megan, only to end up burnt himself. She runs and the body crawls after her. Meanwhile, Andrew arrives at the hospital and finds her phone as well as Randy's body. Megan keeps running away from the walking body, but it just keeps catching up to her. It crawls up to her, as Andrew enters the facility. He looks for Megan inside, but the body just drags her inside the freezer, where she sees the rest of the bodies. Andrew runs into the other security guard, who tells him that everything is down in the hospital. They hear the noise Megan makes in the freezer room and go toward it, finding Megan on the floor. The guard sees the body and runs away, but it eventually catches up to him and kills him. The body heals its last wound and goes after Andrew, when Megan suddenly finds the courage to start shooting at it. She keeps shooting and finally incapacitates the demon, long enough to get her ex out of the facility. She tells him to get help and goes back to pick up the body and take it to the burning room. It wakes up again and struggles with her as it gets burned, but Megan eventually manages to burn it. The police finds her sitting on the floor, playing with a rubber band ball. In the final image of the film, Megan is looking at herself in the mirror. One of her eyes is covered by her hair. A fly appears out of nowhere and she squishes it on the mirror. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.